you have your Bibles with you. I'm sure you will have the Bibles on the... On the uh, yeah. We, we will... Um, this, this, uh, this meeting uh, is on, on, it has been actually mentioned on, uh, on more than one gospel. Uh, so we we'll find it in, in, in Mark, Mark chapter uh, 10 and verse 17. It says, now as Jesus was starting out on his way. Okay, to, to, let us just imagine what's going on. Jesus Christ uh, was actually uh, just finished talking to the people and a lot of people around and he was just leaving the place and going somewhere else uh, someone ran up to him someone saw him and he ran ran to follow him to catch him and when he got there to Jesus Christ what did he do? he fell on his knees he fell on his knees and said good teacher what must I do to inherit the eternal life? Okay, so this is this is the this is the beginning. We are setting the scene. Uh, obviously, there is a lot, a lot to uh, to learn about what's going on from this. Uh, in Luke 18, chapter 18, and verse 18, the same person, this young man, who saw Jesus Christ and ran. To, you know, to speak to him, he was described in Luke, now a certain ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So that particular person is a ruler. So he's not just uh, uh, you know, a poor person. But he is quite a respectable person of quality. Okay? Person of quality. Uh, and he wanted to speak to our Lord Jesus Christ in front of everybody. He is not ashamed. He is not uh, uh, want to have a private conversation. Uh, he is a young person of quality and you would like to speak to him in front of everybody. And we have to remember here that uh, we, are, we will just need a quick, a, quick, a quick comparison between him and between whom <coughs> Nicodemus. Nicodemus was actually an old man, again, a person of quality. Uh, he was one of the Pharisees. One of the, and when he wanted to talk to Jesus Christ, where did he go and when did he go? During the night. So this is a man who is aware, I would like to speak to Jesus Christ, but in private. I don't want anyone to see me. Let me have a private conversation with him. Um, so, this young man didn't mind in front of everybody. Right. So far, this behavior from this young man indicates that he has a sincere and intense desire. He would like to speak to Jesus Christ. He ran, and he would like to speak to him in front of everyone. Doesn't matter. Longing to be in conversation with Christ, and by kneeling down, this indicates humility from his side and respect and veneration to the teacher, to our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Very good. Of course, of course, Jesus Christ, this is actually what the Lord would like to hear. This sort of question, this is what Jesus Christ would like to hear from every one of us. You know, forget about the conversation and the prayer which we keep saying, you know, and give me this and give me that and bless me and, uh, well, I mean, he likes this, but, you know, if you ask him, if, if you'd like to have a nice, interesting conversation with the Lord, this is how to converse with him. So it is a hopeful and very promising address to Christ, which I'm sure the, the Lord is happy, was very pleased with this conversation. That's why, um, that's why 
our Lord Jesus Christ looked at him and he loved him. You know, this is how the how the Bible, he loved him. He loved him because of the the, the questioning, the question which is, so good master, what shall I do that I may inherit the eternal life? I mean, again, let us, let us just think about this. How, how normally, 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 when you have a conversation with someone, what, what is usually your priority? How many times, how many times, I was, I was asked, you know, before, uh, how could I uh, pass the exam? For example, a medical exam. Uh, how, how do I uh, study, uh, for example, for emergency medicine? This was the sort of, oh, from other people, the trainees must have finished the well, How could I get a good job? And this is usually, this is the sort of things which people are engaged in. How could I do well in this world? How could I progress? How could I, you know, find a good job, find a wife, find whatever. This is usually the... But this, this, uh, this young man, he's asking what good thing to do in this life in this world, in order to the enjoyment of the greatest good in the other world. What shall I do in this temporal life? In a few years, and then I'm going to leave them in this, in this world, to have that enjoyment and for the eternal life. Very respectful, very, very broad-minded person. Well, if you have another opinion. The way I look at it, that this chap, very wise. Very wise. Doesn't look underneath his feet. He's someone who looks ahead. Someone who has a vision. I disagree. I think, uh, I think he got his priorities wrong. He got his priorities wrong. Uh, could you elaborate on this? How did he got his priorities wrong? He, uh, yeah, he, just, just from the phrase of the question, it sounds like he's just, he just wants to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, the goal should be, you know, being with God rather than being in, in heaven. If you understand what I'm saying. Like he's, he, it sounds like he wants to go to the greatest party mm -hmm. rather than be with the group. Then what you the question is not how can I be with, <coughs> how can I, how can I sit at the right hand of God, or how can I, you know, dwell with with God forever? It is how can I? Let us go back to the question. Because the question, I, I, I think, the question is, uh, is is quite straightforward. Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit the eternal life? Yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think he understands. Well, I'm trying to say, but uh, that's fine. I think. Uh, Uh, I, think, I think uh what you're saying is yeah. uh the he thinks that the guy is asking just for heaven rather as like as a place rather than to be with God. So how can I mm. inherit eternal life? But then it's but about him. What 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 what, okay. what in the in the question to um, uh allude to this, I mean point to that, that he just wants the place rather than the company of the Lord. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people I mean, want to be in, in heaven, people. That's, that's but, the but goal. Doesn't that imply people. that if you are in heaven, that you will be in company with the Lord? Yeah, it's, I feel it's a in, quite an indirect implication for a lot of people. I agree, I agree what you're saying, with what you're saying. It is, it is linked. You can't have one without the other. Sometimes our focus is heaven, not God. As opposed to hell, in that context. Yeah. We don't right. want to be in hell, we want to be in heaven. But it's not okay. it's nothing to do with God. Right. Uh, no, I'm, I'm well, yeah. But I think you made a good point about how he asked the question because he, he 
concentrated on how he ran to him and knelt. Yeah, I mean, obviously... Uh, so it's not like he was trying to buy everyone. Because we will, we, will, we will have a comparison with someone else who asked the same question with a different attitude and different design. And perhaps we can come to a conclusion if this chap who just offered the place Without, doesn't matter if God is there or not, but or, or, or he would he would like to be in the eternal in the eternal life, so that he can enjoy the presence of the Lord. We will come to it. There will be another uh, another slide which will. Uh, so again, even if it is the place, right, we we just can presume this will do. Will do any other. Even still, he would like to ask for what can he do now for something in the far future, okay? Which is uh, along along uh, someone with, with a vision. Uh, the question I put three points here. It's a very serious question. Talking about eternal things, it was proposed to the right person. Jesus Christ is the the right person to answer this question. He is the, he is God, he is the truth, he is the, the life. And with a good design, because he knelt in, in humility and, and, and he showed eagerness and sincerity. In Luke 10, 25, another, another scenario now, another meeting, another person, an expert in religious, in a religious law, another person of quality, okay, stood up to test Jesus. He's not asking for his benefit, no, he's, he's just starting a conversation to test, to start a quarrel. Teacher, what must I do to inherit the eternal life? What was the answer? How did, of course, he wasn't kneeling, uh, he is standing up showing himself, you know, it's confrontation. So it is a bad design to pick in quirk rather than. Right. We'll just stop here for a minute on this, uh, on this, uh, on, on, on this chapter. How did the Lord, if you open this, if you open Luke 10 and 25, Jesus Christ, how did he answer him? It's more or less, you know, answered him, reminding him of the commandments. Yeah. Commandments. Did you find this? Yeah. If you just leave, because, yeah, if you if just leave the couple of verses. Uh, he said to him, uh, what is written in the law? What mm -hmm. is your reading of it? Right. And he told him the commandments. Obviously, it's a bit embarrassing, a bit embarrassing for this chap, okay? So he wants to justify it himself, because he's embarrassed in front of the people, what sort of question is this? To justify himself, he asked Jesus Christ about who is my neighbor, who is my, as if he doesn't know who is his neighbor. And of course, our Lord Jesus Christ gave him the, the concept the wide Christian concept of a neighbor. And he told him about the, the story of the, the, Samaritan, the, uh, the Good Samaritan. Okay. So different attitude, different design. However, they are the same people of quality and asking the same question. Let us go back to the, to the uh, young man in Mark 10. So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. So what do you, what do you, what do you think, what do you, what's your comments on this response from our Lord Jesus Christ? Because the way I see it, that our Lord Jesus Christ was actually encouraging the conversation with him. He is pleased with the question and he is encouraging the conversation with him. Do you agree with me? Yeah. 
how Christ encouraged this address. <clears throat> because he listened to what he said, he, his first thing what he said was, good teacher. So Jesus took that and made it into a question, why do you call me good? So he's communicating with him. Okay. Just how God wants us to communicate with us. And remember also that at that time, good was the description of the Lord. Good is a character of the Lord. If you, if you, if you, if you say to someone, you, Mike, you are good at that time, as if you are God. Okay. That's why our Lord Jesus Christ told him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. This is the description for God. Okay? And this is a hint as well. Maybe encouraging him to believe in him. That he is the Lord. He is God. Okay. And then he told him about the about the commandments. And the young man said, Teacher, I have wholeheartedly obeyed all these laws since my youth. But then, what does that indicate? What does that indicate? Okay, if, if you are reading the, what this will add to the to this young man? <coughs> What's your perception about him now? Still looking for a place to, uh, maybe still looking for the for the heaven as a place to stay, but. but but don't, don't, you, don't, don't you see him quite serious in his spiritual life? So you don't think so? I don't want to judge him. <laughs> I, I just, the uh, Ten Commandments are not like, I don't know, I just feel like. You know, we are talking at the time of Jesus Christ when people, they have the loop. And people were following laws. You know, there, there, there is law and commandments. We're not talking about uh, the New Testament. We're talking about the Old Testament, where the laws are there to be obeyed, to be followed. Okay. okay it's, just, it's just that the, the ones that he names, like, do not commit adultery, do not marry, do not steal, do not bear false, like. It's not like exceptional things that he hasn't done since his youth. Either. And I'm sure a lot of people at the time have been in the same situation as him that haven't known anyone who comes to adultery. It's not, mm. it's not standing out to me. I'm, mm. not, I'm not saying this guy's, this guy's good. You know, it's just like... Oh, the standard was... You yeah, know, this was the like, standard then. Maybe one thing he did above the standard that he wants to to get better. Yeah. Maybe maybe one good thing that, well, I am, uh, well, I, I understand that, but I would like to develop. Right? And this is, we, we, we can actually learn that from him. Yeah. That he would like to be, to be, to get better. <coughs> so he was pleased to find that he had lived, you know, friends, this is Jesus Christ. And pleased to see that he was inquisitive how to live better than so. Do you agree with me about this? Okay. Yeah, let us see what's. Uh, here is something that which I think yeah, we, we should take this for our for our benefit. Ignorance of the extent of the spiritual nature of the divine law makes people think themselves in a better condition than they really are. Which means that what does that mean? Well, well what this statement means. Sometimes people, uh, if I'm, you know, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, and I don't lie, I don't, uh, uh, I'm honest, uh, uh, I do pray, I, uh, I don't do anything bad. Uh, some people, well, people may be, may be happy that they are living this sort of life. Sure. But this is because they lack knowledge, they are ignorant of what the contents of the Bible. If I am ignorant what I'm expecting 
what I expected from me. If the Lord would like me to, well, we're talking now about the New Testament. Okay. If the if the Lord would like me to uh, to love my enemies, for example, or whoever is um, you know took your uh, tunic, your cloak, give him the tunic. Well, this is this is a high level. If I'm just happy that I'm not uh, lying and I'm uh, I don't steal and uh, I don't swear and well, this is some standard now. By knowing, but by getting more knowledge from the Bible, <coughs> this sort of standard doesn't get me anywhere. Doesn't get me to the eternal life. Nice being a nice person, very social, loved and uh, and loved by all people and loving all people and socially very nice. This is no guarantee whatsoever. This will take you to the eternal life. That's why ignorance of the knowledge of the Bible, the Word of God, can mislead people. They think they are doing well, doing okay, but they are not. Hence, we need to look, read, understand. And follow and you know, put what we read in action. The word of God is life, is life, and life to be to be applied right now. Not something to be done in the future. No, it is, it is from now. I think you all will agree with me that Christ would particularly love to see young people and rich people asking their way to heaven. What do you think? We would love to see young people who, rather than being uh, engaged in too many things in life and you know, not thinking about their eternal life, and uh, we would love to see them more concerned about the eternal life. So Jesus Christ told him, well, one thing you lack, sell what you have and give to the poor and you shall have pleasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. Again, we need to analyze this. Uh, we need to spend time looking at this. Sell what you have and give to the poor. I mean, obviously, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, he knew, he knows very well that this chap is quite a rich. He had a lot of possessions. Okay? Uh, sell everything and give it to the poor, and you will have the treasure in heaven. Come and take up the cross and follow me. Come and take up the cross means what? Means that you are going to have tribulations. Yeah. Going to have tribulations, problems. Well, I'm, I'm sure all of you know the, the response. Well, what, did, what did this chap do? He left. He grieved. Right? Although he didn't, he didn't, did he lose anything of his possessions at that time? But what did he give sad? He still has everything. He had all his possessions as he is. He didn't give up a, a penny, did he? So why, why, why did he leave sad and leave grieved? Grieved or what? What made him sad? What made him sad? Because we find it hard to give up some stuff in this world, but because he was so, like, so full of his possessions that he just couldn't give it away. Like he loved it so much that he made his idol to keep it with him. So and then he didn't give any he didn't give up anything, did he? He didn't because So he still he kept all his money and all his possessions. So what 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 why is this? It's not the answer he was looking for. His his intentions was good the way how it went to Jesus. Mm. But his heart was not in the right place still. Uh. He, he's still in the worldly So he left so. said because he still he is sincere and still he would like to be with Jesus Christ. 
shed. Otherwise, well, if, it, if, if this is not of concern to him, he should just. I'm not going to give anyone possession and, and he can leave without grieving. But being, feeling sad that he was sincere, he was honest. He, he, would, he would really would like to follow Jesus Christ. Let us put this, I mean, we are talking about the chat as if we are, uh, yeah, well, the whole idea of this story is to see what link, what link, what link between him and between us. And obviously, it is not a matter of money and possessions and uh, uh, <laughs> uh, to, to apply this, it is not because we you know, have money and we, nothing, it is not money, it is Anything which you like, which you love, which can take you away from God. And every one of us, he or she, knows what can separate him from God, what can delay, what can influence, what can have a negative impact on the relationship with the Lord. This particular chat. His possessions, and because he because he, you know, he had these possessions in his heart, he he couldn't really do the what what Jesus Christ is well, asking to do. Right, let us, I mean, a few, few questions now we need, to, we need to find an answer. Do, do you think, I mean, obviously you could, you could ask yourself and say, well, well he may not be that, uh, that serious. If he was really serious and firm and he firmly believed what he wants to do and the eternal life of the highest value for him, so what? Give me the possessions. Give the possessions out. Leaving said can make you think that he wasn't that uh, firm in his belief. Yes or no? Yes. Right. Another question. Does he really believe that there is really a true treasure in heaven sufficient to make up for giving up all his wealth? I did leave everything and then go to the uh, eternal life. There's <laughs> nothing there. <laughs> if I lost it here and there. <laughs> but obviously, it's a, it's a, how, much, how much faith, <coughs> how much trust do we have? How much trust do we have? Because the the amount of trust will be the trigger for you to, to really take the step forward and do the, you know, and, 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 and take the action and leave what it is dear for you. Does it have to be money? Perhaps the big question is, is he willing to deal with Christ upon trust or not? Is he trusting him or not trusting him? <coughs> what, do you, what, what do you think? Yeah. Lack of trust? Well, all these are questions. I mean, all these are questions and all these are things which we, if we do not, if, if we do not, Say, if, if, if I know that there is something which keeps me apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, a certain behavior, certain thoughts, certain inner actions, which keeps me away from Him, and still I am hesitant, I'm not firm to get rid of this, this means that still I'm not trusting Jesus Christ. You understand what I mean? <coughs> yeah. right. uh, 
the fathers of the church in their explanation to this, uh, and they said that, well, Jesus could have wanted him to be the first founder of the Christian church. Because if you remember, in the beginning of the, the Christianity, everyone became Christian. What did they used to do? Sell all their possessions and put the money at the feet of the apostles. So perhaps our Lord Jesus Christ would like him to be what? To be the very first founder of the church. Preparing him for persecution, because he told him, carry the cross. Carrying the cross, expect that you are going to have problems, tribulations, trials. <coughs> Some of the fathers said that, well, probably he had no family. This, this is in their contemplation. This is probably, and Jesus Christ knew that this chap doesn't have a family, doesn't have children to earn, yeah, to inherit the world, doesn't have anybody. And he wanted him to be a father to the poor and make them his heirs. And everyone, of course, to his ability, must relieve the poor and be content. Right. So, anyway, sorrowful parting. He left sad. Well, Jesus Christ could have, uh, you know, second thoughts about it and said, well, the chap is rich and he wants to be a follower. And now, well, we, Peter and uh, well, these are the fishermen. They are poor. Why don't we, you know, change our minds and uh, make it easier for him and bring him back? Do, yeah, Jesus Christ can do that. But, uh, don't you think he could, he could have done that? <coughs> the rich were poor. Or Jesus wants money. Maybe a bit easier life rather than. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I mean, he's God. Like, he can do whatever he wants. We need money. Okay, what about Peter and the others? <laughs> they need money. <laughs> yeah, God can give them money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but <laughs> I mean, God, don't you think? Yeah, this is something is which. you discussed last week in that. Yeah. Um, when Israel went to fight the Philistines, who, I can't remember who, but uh, they had how many, how many thousands of men going to war, yeah. and God, God like, he selected them to boost. Yeah, he, yeah, he selected only like three hundred men to oh, fight yeah, against yeah. out of thirty thousand to fight against however many oh. hundreds of thousands, yeah. and they won. And that's the point that God, God's strength is made in weakness, it's not, you know, it's not made in, in people's wealth or their strength okay. or whatever. But I, I think, I mean, I think the message which we are trying to get at that, he was said at the saying, and went away grieved, for he had good possessions, but the, what, what, what we want to get is, our Lord Jesus Christ will not, will not, He's giving everyone a free will. And it's up to every one of us to follow him or not to follow him. Free will. Free will. He wouldn't, our Lord Jesus Christ, he wouldn't uh, change the terms and conditions. Okay? This is my terms and conditions. If you want really to be with me, to follow me, you have to get rid of anything you rely on, you have confidence in. Okay. If you find your security in something else apart from him, you can't be a follower of Lord Jesus Christ. If you find, if you find your uh, assistance, your support, your um, confidence, your security in anyone else apart from the Lord, you can't be a follower of the Lord. So Christ will keep no man or a woman against his or her will. And Christ knew all men's hearts. He would not court him to be his follower because he was a rich man and a ruler. Okay. Right. 
obviously the, the, the message here that the danger arose not from having the money and the possessions, but trusting and placing the confidence in the in the riches. And in the, this is the this this was the you're expecting protection and provision from your possessions, you can't be a follower to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the is the message clear, I think. It's quite Uh, I, I just wanted to, uh, because our Lord Jesus Christ said that the, the passage of the camel through, through the eye of the needle, uh, uh, the eye of the needle is, is, is not actually the, the needle, the, the eye of the needle is the, the gates of Jerusalem, uh, you know, the gates of the, for those who have been to Jerusalem, the, the gates of Jerusalem, there is very, very small, narrow uh, entrances, and they call it the eye of the needle. And uh, to get a camel through the, uh, this uh, entrance, the, the, the camel has to be unloaded, kneel down, and they keep you know, pushing and pulling and dragging it until it's, it's, you know, it's a tight fit to get, him, to get the camel through the Okay. But, I mean, obviously, the, what, what is the, the uh, disproportion? Uh, uh, it's this. Unload. Unload means what? Anything which I love, I rely on, I prefer, I uh, find pleasure in. Okay. I have to unload it. I have to unload my heart to get rid of everything like that, okay? So that I can get through to the presence of the Lord. I need to unload my heart from any feelings, any desires, any distractions, <coughs> anything which <coughs> made to need humility. This is the humility and confidence. Humility and humble. So th th that's why the, the Lord uh, use this, uh, you know, the, the need of an eye. It is to remind us that life becoming has to be unloaded, to kneel down. Okay. Um, so this is the, yeah, this is the summary of the message we just said. Uh, the great sign of the good man is when his love to Christ comes to stand in competition with love that is lawful, that is his duty. What's this? What's this? I mean, if you, if you, if you read this statement, what, uh, what does that mean? Because sometimes, sometimes you say, well, life is very busy. I spend hours and hours and hours, for example, studying. And what I can offer the Lord is this 15 minutes. You have a duty, you are doing your duty. But I can't actually get rid of my money because I, uh, for example, I'm a father and I have a family and I have three children. And I, well, this money, I have to spend my children and, you know, after my uh, death, they will inherit this money, so I can't just give that. I can't just give it. It duties, duties, you know. Uh, you know, so this is a duty. H having said that, having said that, although it is, yes, a duty, it can be an excuse. It can be an excuse. And the Lord doesn't want such an excuse like this. He wants you to honesty, sincerity, and to follow. To follow. Yes, you are very, very busy. Yes, you have too many subjects to study. But he wants you to stand in front of him and to pray to him with your heart because you are getting the blessing from him. If you if you, if you had a very busy day, for example, and said, well, I can't, it's, it's bedtime now, I'm very tired, I can't stand up to, to pray, I'm going to go to bed. 
and says, no. Believe me, the Lord, the Lord. If you, if you reduce the hours of your sleep, sleeping by half an hour, I can guarantee for you that the Lord will make you wake up in the morning fresh and energetic as if you have had your eight hours sleep or whatever number of hours. And you need to trust in this. You need to trust in that. You need to trust that. Well, I can't go to the church because if I go to the church uh, and if I attend this and this and this, well, I will be too tired and um, I will not be able to catch up with the uh, so and so. And this will have an impact on my uh, energy. Well, uh, If I trust that the Lord will bless my time, I will not come up with excuses like this. Although it is duty. You can explain that well, I'm doing my goodness. So this is He shall have abundance. Abundance. This is what the this is what the Lord promised us. Everyone who's going to follow him, to trust in him, will have abundance of comfort while he is sufficient to make up for all his losses. If we think that by giving time to the Lord is a loss for us, here we are. Sufficient to make up for all his losses. His relation to Christ, his communion with the saints, our, our communion with the saints, and relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, shall be to us, or everyone that will be brothers, and sisters, and houses, and all. Well, this, is, this, is the, this is what the Lord, if you are going to give up anything for the Lord, compensation will be here, now, and in the eternal life. And we need, well, it's trust. You trust in this. You trust in that. And you receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, brethren, and sisters, mother, children, lands, with persecutions, and in the world to come eternal life. With persecutions. The Lord never promised happiness, never promised easy life, never promised that you are going to have a comfort comfortable life. Sometimes people, when they go from problem to problem, or, they have, or things are not going very well in their lives, why that? What, what's the, if this is the Lord's will in my life, if this is God's will in my life to, to be in such uh, a misery or such a problem, if this is His will, and they keep asking, what's God's will in my life? Well, God's will in your life and in every one of us, is for you to be holy. This is God's will. Not to be happy, not to be comfortable. Well, I'm not saying that he doesn't want you to be happy, not to be unhappy, but he wants you to be holy. You need to be holy first. And to be holy, you may have to go through periods of unhappiness. This is God's will. Not... God's will in my life, uh, which uh, which job I'm going to do, which career I'm going to take, which exam I'm going to, which subject I'm going to study, or which uh, this is this is when you become holy in Him, the decisions about these other decisions will will will, will come straight away. But God's will for you to be holy first. And then you can decide about through him, through our through through being holy in him, you will have the right decision in deciding which career, which uh, university, which uh, whatever, which uh, person I uh, you know have a, you know, a wife or uh, or a husband. So this is God's will. And 
and you will receive this heat and in the eternal. So, few things which just need to sum up to learn from this meeting. We need to go to the Lord with sincerity, honesty, eagerness, okay, with humility, with humility. And when you when you pray, make your prayers for the eternal things, not just things on this well, don't be fully engaged by the, the materials and the exam next week and the, uh, just have a conversation of high standard conversation with the Lord, high standard, develop like this, what can I do to inherit the eternal life, okay, forget about what the, the intentions of Dicha. Make your intention sincere with sincerity to inherit the eternal life and to have a relationship and to unite with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and make the, the relationship based on trust. On trust. Trust in Him. Trust in Him. And whatever you have in your heart, anything which makes the relationship unsettled, straight away, get rid of this. Give up all your possessions. Give up what you are. You think, I have my comfort in this. I have my enjoyment in this. Obviously, this rich chap, his enjoyment was in his possessions. Look at the enjoy. Look at the possessions that he have an enjoyment in it. A lot of people, they enjoy counting money. They keep the cash to count and to enjoy counting the banknotes. Enjoy it. So you see what's, what's, what's your enjoyment and you need to uproot it. Get it out of your heart. And deal with the Lord on the basis of trust. And believe that the treasure in the eternal life is far, far <coughs> more than 10 minutes of enjoyment doing something which may separate me or may make my relationship with the Lord unhappy. May the Lord give us to have full trust in Him, full confidence in Him, and security in Him, and to be holy in Him. Any questions? Or any comments? Not the same questions. Any comments? Is, uh, is that the same passage that St. Anthony heard? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, and, and the St. Anthony, quite rightly, he had full trust. Mm. Straight away, he, uh, <laughs> he did it. He, he, didn't, he didn't leave uh, grieved or sad. He just he did it. With full trust. I really like the, uh, the bit that you said about uh, it's something that we do now, not something we do later, or, or it's a nice idea when, I, when, I'm, when I've got some money I'll put some aside to go, but you, know, you can do it now. And uh, it was something that I had an old housemate who was Christian, and we once were discussing this point, and uh, he was saying that how often that we say, oh, I'll do it after my exams, and then after your exams something else comes up. Uh, do it after I finish my degree when I'm actually a, a doctor and I've got time. You become a doctor, you won't have time. And then and what happens is you get married and you're like, oh, I'm too busy with that. And then you get children and then, and then you look back in your life and we, <laughs> and we were just thinking, like, you're going to come a time when you just look back and go, when have I ever had time? These are excuses. And, and it's something that, like, all these points we can, can apply it now, we should apply it now. But so often, and I do it, I'm very guilty of it. If I go, oh no, I've got my finals coming up, oh, uh, I'll do it later. But, yeah, these are the times to act. Yeah, and to act immediately. Because it implies that, if, if you don't do it now, it implies that there is some sort of distress. Well, if I 
remember, but right now I'm reading and did something else happen.